I'm in Newbridge, which is west of Dublin here in Ireland. I've come to the Engineering Technology Group's Smart Machining Factory event for 2018. I'm going to go inside and catch up with Jamie Fletchmore, who heads up this division of ETG, and find out some of the reasons why they're putting on this event and what they're actually showing here for engineers that visit this week. So, Jamie, thanks for the invitation here today to your event. What are you showing here? Well, actually, Paul, uh, rather than talking about what we're showing, why don't you come and have a look and see what we're showing? All right, give us a tour. Let's go. Let's go. So this is where a smart factory starts. Is that correct, Jamie? That's correct, yeah. So what you've got here, Paul, as you can see on the wall here, we've got the Mastercam, we have the Camplete software, we have the Simco software. Everything we do here is what we teach our customers. So this is the uh, top floor to the shop floor beginning. So the Mastercam software is where we bring in the models, the drawings, and we generate the toolpaths associated with the actual part we're trying to machine. And then we bring it through into the Camplete software, which does the verification side of the component. So this is where we're checking to make sure any collisions, uh, any mishaps that have come through onto the program side. And then finally, we take it through to the Simco product, which then transfers the programs out onto the machine shop floor. It, where's the ele element of optimization in all of this? But well, the optimization through the master cam, you can actually build up your programs, you can see what you're doing, and that gives you then the verification inside there. The Camplete gives you the full G-code verification. So from this, it actually is running the actual machine simulation, and from there, what you can do is you can change your toolpaths, and you can actually get the best output from your machine. So if your cycle time is, say, 12, 12 minutes, running it through a Camplete software, we can uh, optimize that and get nine minutes. If that all works well, then we're ready to go to the machine. So going back maybe a decade or two ago, you'd just buy a machine, stick it on the shop floor, press the button and hope for the best. It all starts here now. Yeah, absolutely. So when you program a machine normally from the old days, you'd stand there, you'd write G codes, you'd write a block of code, you'd take it to the machine, you'd then have to spend hours trying to prove that out. Done it many times. Yeah, and now here it's all done through simulation and software. Okay, once we've done this bit, what's next? Uh, what we'll do is we'll take you out to the shop floor and we'll see where this all comes together. So this is where it all happens then, Jamie? Yeah, so what you've got there, what we've done in the CAD office, we've actually created all the programs, all the part programs, we've done all the verification, and then we've sent the program from Simco into the machine tool. So what we have now, the machines are ready to run. So the machines are now sitting resident directly into the control, straight from the Simco software. And now the operator, all he has to do is set his tool length, set his datums, press the cycle start button, and he's making money. Now in this showroom, and it's important to state this, there aren't many showrooms, if any, in Ireland like you have here, are there? No, there definitely isn't. Uh, the same what setup we have here, uh, you won't find it anywhere else in Ireland. And what I think is interesting here as well, Jamie, is the types of machines that you've got. I mean, you've got three axis, five axis, and multi-axis turning. Is that, have, you, have you done that deliberately to represent what could be a normal machine shop? Yeah, so what we've got here, Paul, we've got sort of Fred and the Sheb type machines, three axis machines, right the way through to multi-axis, multi-spindle, five axis, twin turret. This is typical of what we're actually selling into Ireland at the moment. And obviously the three, end, uh, three axis end looks after the, the smaller companies. Now, I know they've been cutting in anger, or they will be cutting in anger today. What happens about feeding these machines? Because a lot of Industry 4 and Smart Factory is about the automation. How do you address that? Yeah, well, if we go and have a look at that, Paul, we've got a live show of our halter system. Okay, let's go. So I've seen a few of these around, these yeah. halter robots. So this is how you're going to feed the machines in? Yeah, so these machines here, we can build these up onto milling, milling machines, lathes. They could be old machines, new machines, it doesn't matter. So we do all the retrofit, all the installation here ourselves, and we can work out for the customer exactly what is the right grid, grid plate for them, what is the right cycle time, and we can give them the hours of unmanned running. Do you not have to be making vast quantities of parts though to get the benefit from these, or can you do lower volumes as well? No, this is a, a teach type system, so it's four lower volumes. So it has a simplified PLC on the front of the system there. So we can actually just, we can do one part, two parts. Um, it depends on the weight as well. If you've got heavy parts, do you want your guys loading them in and out on the machine all day long? So there's a health and safety factor to it as well. And you, you mentioned this about being a teach control. How does this integrate into the stage one that we spoke about with your, your software, your CAD CAM? Can it, or is this independent? Uh, there is, you know, you can build that in as well. So there are some systems there we can put in the automation to guarantee a full solution on the actual overall process. Okay, so right, so we, we've, we've done the, the first part, the software, the, yeah. uh, the creating of the programs, we've done the machining, we're feeding the machines. How do we know that what we're doing is right? 
Well, there's something else I can show you, Paul. So if we go and have a look at that. Final piece of the puzzle. Yes. So how does all this work? Well, what you've got here is a monitoring system. What we're actually doing is detecting the actual uptime of the machines. So from here, we can say exactly how long the machine has been running. We can see if it's been alarmed for any, any reason for uh, maybe a tool breakage or something in the machine. We can also, if the machine stops, we can also send a signal to the operator or to somebody's home place via the mobile phone. So you can actually keep the machines running 24-7. Uh, it doesn't, uh, like for some people who don't like it too much because that means if they've got to get out of bed at two o'clock in the morning um, to go and set a bar feed up or something, but it gives you the comfort that you can run virtually full 24 hours. You say some people might not like that. I bet the owners of the businesses like that because it's a, it's a way of making sure that you're keeping your machines running. Exactly, yeah, they will. I mean, the owners will like it because exactly that. So. And I, I suppose it's, it's quite self-explanatory and evident that the green means, as we see here, that it's running and the red means it's stopped. Yeah. If you don't want red ones, do you? No, absolutely not. Red ones is bad news. Green ones is good news. So if it's all green, then there's plenty of money being made. And how, do you, how, how difficult is it to get uh, a system or software like this up and running? Uh, not difficult at all. So we have our own engineers on site here, so we actually can tap into the machines. The software is already pre-configured, so it's literally just a case of setting it up onto the actual machine that we want to monitor. Uh, we actually do trial versions for customers, so we'll put it in for three months on a trial basis, and if it doesn't give them what they want, we'll just take the system out again. So the tool that you've given me today, albeit brief, is that is that the reason for this event? Is that what you're doing with your engineers that are going to visit you today and tomorrow and the next day? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at what we've got here, Paul, this is a typical of a, of a typical small shop, large shop, it doesn't matter how big the shop is, um, you're going to start off with a CAD system, you're going to have verification. Uh, what we offer within the group, this is the whole of the UK and Ireland. So everything you see here today is what we offer in, in the UK as well as in Ireland. Now, you wouldn't have been putting on an event like this unless you'd seen a demand uh, for, call it, this transition into smart factories. Uh, you know, yeah, how big is that demand now for you? Yeah, I mean, there is a big demand because there's a lot of skill factor that's missing over here as well as we've identified in the UK. So what we're trying to do is with all these softwares, with the input that we're bringing into our customers, we're trying to upskill these guys. So, you know, the demand is there because they, the work is there, but they don't have the skills at the moment. So for us, we're giving them the a solution. And that's what ETG is all about, is a solutions provider. How many others in Ireland or in this market do you think can offer that one-stop shop with new machines, software, monitoring, automation, the whole lot? How many is there, Jamie? Uh, as I said, in the Irish market, I don't think there's anybody other than ourselves. Um, UK is slightly different. And do you think that will be a reason why you're expecting around about 150 people over the next few days? Yeah, we've taken a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in what we've been doing over these last couple of years. And this year alone has been our best year, best start. Um, we put in over two million pounds worth of sales already since January this year. Um, and that just goes to prove what a kind of a, a mark we're making in the, in the Irish market. <laughs>